The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. So, and this is going to be another very special day today. So, we have Nan. Nan has been familiar with the Expat Club for three weeks. She came here three weeks ago and I, and I got talking to her and I said, you can give a talk at the club. <laughs> and she said, yes. <laughs> I should have told her that it's always a mistake for a woman to say yes to Ren. But anyway, <laughs> the, uh, so she is a delightful Thai lady. She's, she had, she's going to talk about it herself, but she had some health issues and she started studying nutrition in 2016 and of course now has a degree. She's uh, moved back to Thailand uh, from her time in Canada. So I th uh, who thinks that uh, slowing down aging and, uh, is a good idea? Slowing down the effects of aging, okay? Yeah. So I'm sure we're all going to get some very interesting inf information and she's starting up a mailing list now that she's back in Thailand. You can join the mailing list and go and get tips and stuff about uh, health and nutrition, etc. And I've actually suggested her, to her this morning that she should do a regular or irregular column on nutrition for the Pattaya Mail because they're always looking for free authors there who aren't charging. So I think that could be a very interesting thing and a good career thing for her. And I am talking too much. I'm going to hand over to the delightful Nan who is going to, introduce, who's going to talk to us about age-defying wellness. Come up, Nan. It's her, by the way, this is her first public speak. Just talk, right? Be gentle with her. It's the first time she's spoken in public. It's a big deal. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. So glad to see you all today. Um, because this is my first talk, I'm a little bit nervous. But I did my best to prepare the presentation for you. Um, so let's get started. So today I'm honored to be sharing with you the topic that I am passionate about, which is nutrition and wellness. And to me, it means a lot to have learned um, about nutrition because it actually saved my life. And when it comes to aging, as uh, this topic, because I was thinking when Ren asked me to uh, give the talk, I was thinking what would be the most relevant thing that I can provide to you all. And I think that the process of slowing down aging is relevant to everyone, even me, because I too want to pre prevent chronic diseases and I want to have a healthy weight and have energy and have mental focus, just like all of you. And the things that I'm gonna be sharing with you today, you can start today and you can still benefit six months from now, one year from now. It's all about the lifestyle changes. So does anyone here have ever been through a health crisis where you have to really make the change and now you feel so much better than you were before? Excellent, so glad to see that. I had that crisis too. And I will share with you in a second. And I want to share with you that I've just turned 40 this month, and it's a life-changing moment. Because I feel like I have come probably a halfway of my lifespan, and I have to think now, because we are aging every day since we were born, whether we know it or not. But it feels so good when we were young, because we were more resilient. And now, as we're going through, you know, the other end of our life, we have to think that how we want to prevent chronic diseases from happening, right? And uh, that's when I'm contemplating on my life too. And thanks to the things that I have learned, at the age of 40, I can tell you that I feel like I'm in my best shape in my life. I feel so much better than when I, when I was in my 20s and when, in, when I was in my 30s because I had so many health issues. So I would like to introduce myself. 
My name is Nan. Ren already introduced me. And this is my Thai name, Jan Tawi Supa. My last name is really long. That's why I just put just two syllables there. But if you want to hear it, I can tell you. <laughs> so my last name is Supa Jaren Pon Sukun. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, whenever I go to the bank and they, uh, when I, whenever I call the bank in Canada and they say, "Can you tell me your last name, please?" and I'm like, "Okay, are you ready? I will spell it for you." And then I just go through the, all the alphabets, and they're like, "Oh my God, that is so long!" So <laughs> that's why I just put only two syllables there. Um, I went to a school in Toronto. It's called the Institute of Holistic Nutrition. It's a really good school. And I am, I'm proud to be certified as a nutritionist. And I use this knowledge to help heal myself from chronic illnesses that I've had when I was younger. I used to have the condition called IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and I didn't know that was the case at that time. And I also had severe allergies, which, you know. When the doctor did my blood work, they couldn't find what was the cause, but it always showed up on my skin randomly. And growing up as a teenager, I had severe hormonal issues. I had acne, I had PMS, and so many things that I felt like my body was such a burden because I didn't have the energy like other kids or other people that they can just, you know, go partying and have fun all night and. Hello. Okay. And the next day, they can just go to school and go. Thank you. Um, yeah. So that's why uh, I was on the search for um, a natural way to heal myself. Because every time I went to see a doctor, I would always get medication. And at such a young age, I already have so many pills to carry around, and I don't believe that this is the way that I'm going to live for the rest of my life. So I, I was always on the search, but I didn't find the answer until way later in my 30s that I found a nutrition school. I read so many books about diets, about natural healing, and then I've tried so many things to help heal myself, and I got better. But it, it wasn't at the point where I feel like, yes, this is like I'm at my peak and I feel the healthiest I could be. Because of the confusion that I got with so many information out there, I decided to go to school to learn the science behind it, to learn how the body works, and to actually figure out what is the right thing for me. And now I have learned from school that everybody is different, and none of the magic pill or one diet that's going to be right for everybody, and that's why I want to share with you how to figure out what is going to be the right thing for you. And yes, uh, I had an experience in clinical nutrition. I give consultation to clients, and I also have worked at a health food store in Canada as a nutritionist team lead. What I did was to train sales staff about supplements and how to give advice to customers to pick the right products for them. So I, I'm quite passionate about supplements as well, and also about cooking and nutrition. Now I want to show you that the impact of diet and lifestyle can actually be much more than the aging process itself. The things that you do on a regular basis can predict how fast you are going to age, or how slow you are going to age, and it can also predict what kind of chronic diseases you are going to develop or not develop. I show you two researches here that says changing your lifestyle and diet can actually reverse markers of aging in adults, and this one is from Neuroscience News. And the other one is from UC San Francisco, and it says changing a lifestyle and diet can actually lengthen your telomeres. Anybody knows what a telomeres is? Excellent. Yes, 
scientists believe that telomeres, which is the end of your DNA, the length of telomeres can actually determine our lifespan. Yes. And the shorter it is, it means that the shorter of the time we have, probably. But if we can make lifestyle and diet modification, there is a chance that you can actually lengthen your telomeres. So what's actually happening in our cells as we age? This is the wear and tear of living. Like we cannot really avoid it. We start this process since we were born. So I already mentioned telomeres shortening. Every time our cells divide, which is a part of growing and living on a regular basis, every time the cells divide, the telomeres shorten, and it's going to keep shortening as the time goes by. This we cannot avoid. And DNA damage accumulation is like when you, when you have a book that you like so much and you keep reading it, and uh, your, your fingerprints is on it, and now the letters become blur. And our DNA is kind of like that. Eventually, our DNA is a blueprint for the cells. Eventually, if that becomes a blur, the replication process become impaired. And the new cells can become cancerous, or the cells that are not good for the body. And that's why this fancy word here called Cellular senescence. Cellular senescence means retirement for cells. And you know, we retire too, and our cells retire. But our cells retire in our body, it means that the cells stop dividing. Because the body knows that if the next generation is reproduced, it might not be good for the body. So the last generation of cells is still there to do its job but no more replication. And then on the other side, there is a decline in autophagy. Autophagy means house cleaning for cells. So every day we have to clean the house, right? And our cells have to do that too, every day during the time that we sleep. And we can actually increase autophagy so that our cells have time to repair and to clean up so that our cells are in a better shape. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And then oxidative stress. This one is, is a part of, or metabolism is a part of uh, exposure to pollution in everyday living. And uh, this is the factor that we can also control to reduce exposure to some toxin that might not be good for our body. And then lastly, when everything is happening together, our organs start to slow down. And that's the natural process of aging. And these are a risk of chronic diseases. According to Dr. Andrew Well, anybody knows Dr. Andrew Well? Awesome. <laughs> yes. So I, I have, um, in our school, we have his book as a textbook too. And uh, he advocates that. The body is resilient. It always wants to come back to balance if we give it the right resources and environment for it to do so. So if you want to learn more about Dr. Wells, um, yes, that's his website right there. Now I would like to share with you the three R principles. This one I actually came up with just to make it easy to understand, like a three-step process where you can do it all together. The first thing is to remove. Remove means remove the burden from the body in whatever way that we can. And then regenerate means give the body the time to repair and regenerate as much as possible. And then replenish give the body the right resources for it to do its function optimally. Let's start with remove. So the idea here, as we slow down the aging process, we want to focus on repairing and regenerating so that we can function at our best. So on the left side is the burdens that 
the body has to deal with regularly. And then the other side is how we can support it. So let's look at it. I think everybody knows that these things on the left side are not really good for us. Processed foods, sometimes we have to eat it, but if we have the options, I think that natural whole foods is the way to go. Processed food, excessive sugar, are empty calories. And whatever you're taking into your body, be it just um, eating or putting it on your skin or um, you inhaled it, your body has to go through the process of selecting what is good and what is bad because you always have to get what is good inside the body and then take what is bad outside of the body. And what is bad outside of the body will have to um, organs of elimination. And if or organs of elimination has to do a lot of work, then it's going to have to do what's urgent first. And it will never have the time to do the repairing process or do a deeper cleaning for our body. So um, medication, alcohol, smoking, all of these things you already know, these are toxins for your body. And then uh, chronic stress. This one is hard, even like younger people no matter what age you are, if we think about the things that we cannot control or if we have the things that we always worried in the back of our minds, that actually makes the body use up the resources in our, in our body, um, occupying your brain, and it will, um, it will make your cognitive function not being the best that it's supposed to be because there's always this firing of the neurons thinking about the same thing over and over. But I'm not the one to tell you how to fix that because everyone has different issues. But I'm going to tell you that chronic stress is one of the main reasons why uh, people get sick. Now, let's see how we can support our body to detox better. The first thing is hydration, and it's very easy to do. Everybody knows that we should drink more water, but maybe we don't really do that, don't we? So I'm just going to have a sip now. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> water is a part of every chemical process in your body. And if we're dehydrated, we, we're not functioning properly and our blood become thicker, we have higher blood pressure, and we cannot detox uh, toxin out of our body very efficiently. And the next thing is regular bowel movement. And this one, I have to tell you that when I was working in a health food store, sometimes I really have to ask the customer about their bowel movement, and they will be like, do you really need to know that? And <laughs> I have to tell them because this is the thing. People are worried about cholesterol. And cholesterol has to, you know, if you want to decrease cholesterol in your body, you need to have a channel for it to get out of the body. And the way that the body gets rid of cholesterol is through your bowel movement, is through fiber. And if you don't have enough in your diet and you don't have a regular bowel movement, you don't have a way to take it out of your system, right? And I have to explain this to customers that come to the health food store and say, I need a supplement to lower down cholesterol. I've tried this and this and this, and it doesn't work. And I don't even eat a lot of fat. Why do I have a lot of cholesterol? There are many factors that involved in why your body produces more cholesterol. But one of the reasons why you have more may be because you're not getting rid of it regularly. And uh, this is such in hindsight, right? Because it's not that we are taking more, maybe be because we're not getting rid of it effectively. So if this is the main problem, um, I would definitely focus on this to, you know, to have at least one bowel movement a day. And then movement and physical activity, we all know that exercise is good for you, but whenever you start doing something, it's always going to be the hardest at first but then it's going to be a good, ha a good habit 
that you will be addicted to because exercise reduce stress and also improve your circulation. The thing about detoxification is that your lymphatic system doesn't have the valves in the vessel to get the fluid in one direction, unlike the cardiovascular system where you have the valve in your um, artery and veins. So it relies solely on movement. You have to move your body or at least get a massage regularly in order to clear the toxins out of your body. And besides, if you have fatigue and you have low energy, cardio exercise, like aerobic exercise, can actually improve your energy level. You don't have to go too hard, but you just have to go at a pace that you can handle and that improves the number of mitochondria in your cells. Anybody knows what mitochondria is? Excellent. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cells, and it's been proven that if you exercise regularly, it's going to improve in numbers in your cells. And we have a lot of mitochondria all over our body, especially our heart. And then, um, when you move, you are going to sweat, and that's a good way to detox. And deep breaths, even though we breathe every day, but if we consciously take a deep breath, it's going to relax our nervous system, and it's going to reduce the stress in the body, and that is one way to get rid of toxins. And then resting. This one, my father always tell me that you know, when you're getting older, your sleep is getting worse. And you'll keep hearing things, and yet you won't be able to sleep. But I'm telling you, I've seen him playing TikTok in his bed, on his phone. And I have to tell him that <laughs> there are ways that you can have a better sleep hygiene and routine so that you have a better sleep. Because it's very important you get a good sleep every, every day so you can regenerate, and that's what we want to focus on, right? As we grow older, we want to have more time to regenerate. And if we cannot even like recharge and regenerate on a daily basis, then it's going to accumulate, and our body start to decline faster than we want to. All right, now that we talk about regenerate, I want to introduce to you the concept of fasting. Does anyone already practicing fasting? Excellent. Yes. So you know that it has so much benefit on your health, right? Fasting means no food for a certain period of time. And every day, we already fast during the time that we sleep. Studies have shown that when you fast at least 12 hours, you gain the benefit of fasting. What happens in your body is that your blood sugar goes down and it reduces the insulin in your bloodstream and then you start the autophagy process, the self-cleaning, right? And then your cells start to repair, but the fasting method that I want to recommend because I feel like it's doable for most of us is to fast for 16 hours and have eight hours eating window. So 16 hours, this is, the longer you go into the fast, the more benefit that you can reap from fasting. But it's not right for everyone, right? Because one thing we have to make sure of is that we have to know ourselves, if we go further than this, are we going to have like too low of blood sugar? And is it gonna cause more harm than good? Because some people, due to genetic reason or maybe nutrition deficiency, they cannot generate glucose from a non-carbohydrate source. So we have to think about it. And maybe if you're working with your doctors, then ask your doctors, how is my health doing? Is it okay if I do 24 hours or 48 hours? But during the 16 hours, this is start happening. When uh, the insulin goes down, then the body starts to use the glycogen reserve in the liver as the energy. And when that's done, the body starts to use fat for energy and produces ketone. 
and ketone is great for cognitive function, is the brain fuel. So if you really want to reap the benefit of um, improving your mental clarity, fasting longer than 16 hours might be beneficial. And also, you, re you release the growth hormones during these 16 hours. So the growth hormone is also helps you start with like fat burning, and it has so many other benefits to the body. And uh, these are the benefits that comes with fasting. It improves your metabolic health. It improves your insulin sensitivity. So if anybody is worried about being pre-diabetic or being diabetic, you can actually train your body to, to use insulin better and to metabolize glucose better. And after the autophagy happened, it reduces inflammation down. It reduces so many um, molecules in uh, your blood that is going to cause uh, inflammation in the body. And that also benefits your heart health and benefits your brain health because you get the ketones as the um, energy source and also improve your gut health if you have any gut issues because during this time, you start to repair your gut lining. Now, with all the benefits here, we have the eight hours eating window. Oops. And this is where we have to be strategic about what we want to put in our body. First, I want to address the colorful vegetables over here. Colorful is the word, is the key word here, because the more color, the more phytonutrients, the more antioxidants you are going to get. And antioxidants is what we, is what's the most important in this process, because antioxidants protects our cells from free radicals, and that slow down our aging process. 50% should be colorful vegetables, and the other one that is very important is protein. You want to make sure that you have a good amount of lean and clean protein sources for 30% at least. And then healthy fats. We have a lot of fat in our brain. Our brain is made of fat, and our cell's membrane is made of fat. And it depends on the type of fat that we consume is going to determine how our cells communicate to each other because the receptors and everything is outside on the membrane. So healthy fats that you can take, uh, that you can eat, would be like avocado, nuts and seeds, cold press oil. Um, we have so many options. And then carbohydrates. This one is the main source of energy for us, but the carbohydrates that is best for us would be com complex one, which means that they have more fiber, they have more nutrients. And if you don't do whole grains and legumes, you can also do root vegetables as the energy source. Um, whole grain and legumes is uh, higher in vitamins that gives you energy but it depends on your diet. You can always you know, adjust and make sure that you at least get the vegetable part and the protein part. And then for the fruits, I highly recommend that you have high fiber fruit and that is low sugar and also the ones that has high antioxidants. So apples, pears, um, citrus fruits like grapefruit, oranges, kiwis, Berries, any sort of berries are great. Cherries, um, yeah, there's so many things there that you can try. And lastly, you can experiment on using fresh herb and spices um, in your food because these are natural medicine that you can eat and you're not gonna overdose it because I know that you're probably not just gonna chew like 20 garlic in one day, right? So this is just to like sprinkles and add flavor to your dishes, but they're also very good for you. Like for example, the garlic is very good for uh, lowering down the cholesterol and also support your immune system. And uh, let's say ginger and turmeric are anti-inflammatory. You can add in curries, 
You can also add in stir fry. These are very good for you as well. Cinnamon, you can also add in your drinks or your food or your desserts. Um, this one help regulate the blood sugar. And then, you know, cilantro is a great detoxifier. Basil is great for your nervous system and digestion. I can go on and on because I love cooking. Um, but you, you see the picture here. Um, I know that this is, looks like a perfect plate that you should have every day, but it might be impractical for some of us, which, you know, sometimes we don't have time to prepare our own food. For me, when I was very busy, I make sure that in one day I get every food group, you know, and um, it doesn't matter how much, but I want to make sure that I get at least some vegetables and some protein in my diet. So for example, you can also divide like, if you start your first meal with protein and some carbohydrates, right? Um, probably like, let's say, typical Thai diet, brown rice and some eggs, okay? And then maybe later on, you will eat just the vegetables. Maybe you'll have like a bowl of salad. You can cut up some vegetables ready to go, and then you can drizzle it with olive oil or any sort of cold pressed oil that you want, and then put some nuts and seed on top, and that will be, you know, you will finish another food group. And then you can have fruits or not, it's fine, but that will be an example. And sometimes I just make green smoothies. I just add the greens and the fruits together with avocado and some almond milk, and that is like one meal to go that you can just, you know, get everything in here. And sometimes we don't get everything from the food that we eat. And that's where supplementation comes in. And I find that we are here in this era where everything is much easier than in the past. We have supplements. This is like a good, um, a good hack, I would say, because you just take a pill and you make sure that you get a good amount of nutrients that you need per day. The first thing I want to recommend is omega-3 fatty acid. And this one, there are plant sources and also animal sources, but I always quote for the animal source because it contains EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are the fatty acid that are very important to our health. EPA, think about um, the functions that we have in our body. EPA regulates so many hormones. It helps us um, improve, like lower down inflammation. It also helps with our cognitive function. And DHA is a part of our eyes and our brain. And together combined, the recommended dosage is 1,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA combined. So when you look at the label, you'll see that. Sometimes you'll have to do the math, like um, you know how much EPA it is per serving, how much DHA is it, and then you just kind of add the number. At least 1,000 milligrams is recommended, and I find it's really helpful for my health too. It helps me with so many things, my brain function, my hormones, um, I have to thank to uh, omega-3. Uh, some people ask me, what, about, what if I just eat fish every day? It has to be cold water fatty fish. And the best source that I find would be trout or salmon, um, probably tuna too. But as you can see, they are big fish. And we have a problem of mercury in the sea. And we don't know how much mercury we actually consume on a daily basis in order to get um, omega-3. So in a way, I think I, I love trout and salmon, and I think that it's good to have in a real food form, but on certain days that you don't get to have it, a supplement will be a good way to go. And so many manufacturers now, they have to test mercury before they release it into the market, so you can be sure that it's clean, especially in Canada and the States, and I believe in Australia as well. And the next one is B-complex. B-complex is the vitamin that you can take for energy and cognitive function support, especially if you don't eat a lot of legumes and whole grains, because that's where the vitamin, vitamin B is. 
And um, as we age over time, or, uh, or acid in the stomach is getting lower, and that is required to absorb vitamin B from food. So taking vitamin B can be beneficial, and just to guarantee that you have what you need per day, especially if you want to improve your cognitive function, always look for the content of vitamin B12 um, in an active form. It's a long name. The active form is methylcobalamin. Maybe some of you already taking it, but that is the best form of B12 to take for your brain function. And the next one is vitamin C. And vitamin C in the market are not made equal because if you want a really good um, effect of vitamin C, make sure you take it with bioflavonoids. So bioflavonoids are um, the, like an antioxidant that comes in the citrus fruits. If we don't have citrus fruits every day, then vitamin C uh, in a supplement form would be a good one to take. We don't keep it in our body. That's why we always flush it out about like four to six hours after we take it. And especially when we're sick and we go through illnesses or we go through a lot of stress, we use up the vitamin C very quickly. And you can take vitamin C in divided dosage. And the next one is coenzyme Q10. This is the antioxidants that we can make in our body. But as we, as we grow older over time, our ability to make our own become decreasing. That's why it will be beneficial to just take it as a supplement. But this one, I would say it depends. It's not required if you can you know, have like a really good, well-rounded diet to support your body's own production. What I want to address is that coenzyme Q10 uh, is, the, is the resource for the cells energy production. If you don't have enough of this, then you might feel tired and fatigued. And it's also an antioxidant, which is very good for anti-aging. When someone is taking statin, I don't know if you know about the side effects of statin medication. It blocks your own production of cholesterol, which is the purpose is to uh, stop reduced uh, cholesterol level, but it also stopped our own production of CoQ10. And when we don't make our own CoQ10, our body doesn't have the resources to produce our own energy. And that's why it can cause fatigue and tiredness, especially in the heart. Which I'm going to show you a, a case study that the person is taking statin and what we're going to do about it. Okay, so lastly, vitamin K2. Everybody knows about vitamin D3, right? Does anyone take, about, uh, take vitamin D3? Yes, excellent. So you all know about vitamin D3 and the uh, support, uh, the immune support effect. That's why you're taking it, right? During the pandemic, um, people uh, ask me about vitamin D3, how much they're supposed to take. And sometimes I see people that take a very high dose of vitamin D3. So I went into looking into the research and the studies to make sure that it is OK. So what I find is that vitamin D3 increase your calcium uptake in the body, which means that you absorb more calcium from the supplements and from the food that you eat but calcium needs a way to get into the bones. And this is where vitamin K2 comes into play. When I was studying um, nutrition, when I was not really nutrition, studying about food group in grade school, they don't talk about K2. They talk about K, it's just vitamin K, which is the blood clotting vitamin. But now K2 is for me, it's a new thing because I didn't know that it's so essential. It prevents calcium from depositing on your tissue and on your arteries, which, in a sense, it prevents calcification in the wrong places, and it takes the calcium into the bones. So that's very important to take. And the recommended dosage is 
100 micrograms a day. Very, very small amount. This one, this vitamin though, it can be made through the um, certain bacteria in our gut, but we have no way to make sure how much we're getting and if we have those strains of bacteria in our gut because everyone is different, right? And uh, the other minerals that I find is optional, but might be beneficial, especially if you're taking calcium and you're not taking uh, K2 or magnesium. Magnesium helps calcium become more absorbable and it works very well with K2. So I highly recommend that if you're not already taking magnesium, if you're taking calcium supplements, then this one goes well together. And it, calcium and magnesium works together for muscle contraction. So with the calcium, your muscle contracts. With the magnesium, your muscle relax. So if you have too much calcium, especially in a supplement form, it can cause constipation because you know, you're, you're grabbing, but you're not releasing. And um, it can also relax your nervous system. So it can be beneficial to help for sleep as well. And then zinc. Zinc is optional, but if you find that you could use a little bit of more support for your immune system, like when you have a cold and it takes you so long to recover, um, zinc will be good to have for a certain period of time, not forever. I don't believe in taking one supplement, uh, one mineral forever because it can cause imbalances in the body. But for a certain period of time, it could be beneficial. If you find that it takes you so long to heal the wound when you get cut, or if you find that you don't smell things very well and don't taste things very well. So you can also use zinc and it's also a very good antioxidant. And lastly, multivitamins and antioxidants formula I think is optional, but for multivitamins, it will be beneficial if you feel like, okay, I have to make a lot of changes in my life and I'm not gonna have time to, to make this perfect plate, right? Multivitamin guarantees that you get what you need daily while you're making the transition. And if you want to get a good multivitamin supplement, I highly recommend take it in soft gel or capsules because the tablets have fillers and binders, which sometimes makes it hard for your body to absorb. And for some people, some customer came to me and they said, you know, I, I think that this supplements just go right through me because I take this tablet and when I look at what comes out, it's right there. And it's true, it can go right through you because the tablet is so hard and it takes so long for the body, the body to absorb. And if you don't have a lot of stomach acid, it's even take longer. And sometimes your body just kind of like get it right through you. So to get your money's worth, do the capsules or the soft gels. All right, so now that you know the three R's principles, it's time that I show you a case study. This is a real case study that I did, and this is my dad. This is not his picture though. I just um, take someone else's picture, you know, from uh, the PowerPoint software that I use. But um, this, this is his real condition, right? So when we first started, he has high blood pressure and he has high cholesterol, high triglyceride, and his doctor said that he is now pre-diabetic. Um, just gonna take a sip of water. So he doesn't want to take medication because he's, he's already taking three medication, which is statin for cholesterol and the medication for blood pressure and antidepressant. He doesn't want one more thing to take. And he has poor memory and vision. He says that lately he, uh, he just can't remember anything and his eyes, like he, he just can't see things very clearly and also feeling tired. He's an active man and he likes, like, our house has like three stories and 
we have to walk up the stairs. And he said he doesn't want to go up the second floor anymore because he just like he just have to catch his breath. But he wants to be more active, but he just can't. And then heart palpitation randomly, sometime at night, sometime in the daytime. And when he told me that he has these symptoms, and I was in Canada, I just I was just so worried about him because. I, I don't know what he eats. I don't know what he does during the day. Like I, I can't really give him any advice or answers. And he has trouble sleeping. So I asked him, track your diet and tell me what you eat every day. And this is what comes up. In the morning, he loves to have a cup of coffee and croissant. Sometime almond croissant that has like sugar inside, you know, and butter. He loves it. And uh, fruit. So I asked him, like, what kind of fruit? He loves sweet fruit. And do you know durian? You either love it or hate it, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. So durian is, is like dessert. I don't even know if it has any nutritional value. But he loves that. I don't know if he eats that every day, but every time he has pal heart palpitation, this is, um, you know, I ask him, like, what did you eat today? Durian is in the picture. So I, I know that's the culprit. And then lunch is white rice with stir fry or curry. And then uh, snack, he loves coconut ice cream. Sometimes he has that, or pastry. And then uh, nuts or fruits. And then the dinner is the same. So typical Thai diet, we always eat rice for every meal, pretty much. And then his lifestyle, he, he's moderately active because he fixes things, like he just go fix things for people. And he works with chemicals. And he has high stress because he always worried about the work the next day, and he loves to watch the news before bed. Yep, <laughs> very good for sleep. <laughs> He has one bowel movement a day because I, I need to ask him about his bowel movement to see how, how well he can detox. Um, he said, yes, he, he has bowel movement, but this doesn't seem like a lot. And he has um, dark urine, and it feels incomplete. You probably already know this is the sign of dehydration, not enough water, right? Yeah, so now we know what to do. So we apply the three R principles. So as we go through the case study, you can probably see this is how we look at you know, our routine and our diet and what we can do about it, right? So remove first things I just told him that please just cut the coffee because it dehydrates you and you don't drink enough water and it probably makes you not sleeping very well, even though you have it in the morning. The thing is, our liver has to detox excess caffeine out of our system. And my dad is working with chemicals, and you have to get, you know, all the chemicals has to go through the liver. Maybe there's a chance that his liver is not detoxing caffeine properly, and maybe because he's not drinking enough water too, that's why it's still in his system and probably cause heart palpitation and sleep problems. So we cut that out. And also, it, you know, together with pastry, it spiked his blood sugar. That's not good for a pre-diabetic. And sweet fruits, we cut that out. And drink more water. So more water, reduce the blood pressure, increase urine flow, everything benefits. And to regenerate, I suggest him not to eat at a certain time. So he finished his last meal at 6 p.m. So he has his dinner at 5 and then finished at 6, and then breakfast at 10 a.m. So that's 16 hours, and he's on board because that's easy for him to do. And then no phone before bedtime, and I explained to him why. Because any screen emanates blue light, and blue light stops our own melatonin production. That's why you feel alert when you look at the screen. So, and you know, plus the news that he's watching, his brain is quite alert. So it's not really good environment for the body to be relaxing. And then I ask him to delegate his work to reduce his stress. 
And to replenish, the first thing that you take for the day set the tone for the rest of your day. That's why breakfast is important. That you know, you take the stuff that is good for you. If you want to take your vitamins, maybe you take it in the morning so you don't forget to take it later on in the day. Um, so I ask him that instead of pastry and coffee, maybe have two boiled eggs and a green smoothie. It's, it's quite a big change for him because, first of all, boiled eggs doesn't taste like coffee and pastry, and a green smoothie is also a very strange new thing for him. But I told him that look, I'm not asking you to change everything, just the breakfast, and you can eat whatever, but be mindful of what you eat. For the rest of the day, and this is what he follow: a green smoothie and a boiled eggs. And then for the supplement, fish oil will increase the good cholesterol for him, and also it will help with reducing inflammation and blood pressure. And coenzyme Q10, 200 milligrams a day, because he's taking statin, and this will help with his energy production. B complex with chromium. B complex help with glucose metabolism, so that's really good because he he's already like pre-diabetic. We need B vitamins in order to um, process glucose properly with chromium. So chromium is the minerals that improve the cell's receptor on the outside for insulin, so improve insulin sensitivity, and that's uh, what I gave him. And then magnesium. It helps him relax. It reduces the blood pressure, and it's really good for sleep. So the result after six months, he always go back to the same doctor, and his doctor was surprised, and he said, "You know that your blood work is always consistent, right? Like you have like high LDL, you have high triglyceride. What changed this time? Because it looks pretty good." His LDL went down under 100 milligrams. His HDL was about 70, from what I remember. Yeah, so that's a really good amount because it's higher than 40 milligram per deciliter. And he has a better sleep because of all the things that I ask him to stop. And the fasting sugar level has gone slightly below 100. So as you can see, that you can actually retrain the body. When you're a pre-diabetic, you can still go back to normal, right? And he has a better mood and memory, no more fatigue, and less heart palpitation. And the blood pressure has gone down because you know more water intake and everything else that he did. Gradually, um, it's been three years now, so now he is 71. I can tell you that from a man. Who tried to catch his breath walking up the second floor? He now wake up so early, go to John Tian Beach and swim in the sea. Like he actually go to swim twice a week and uh, go to walk along the beach to get his 10,000 steps. So I'm so proud of him that now he feels so brand new and much better than three years ago. But I have to. Disclose the information that this is a lifestyle change. If he goes back to his old way, he can be pre-diabetic. He can have a you know bad result in his blood work again. This is it's not guaranteed that once you know it's better, you can go back to the old way. This is this is a forever change, right? And now he's only on antidepressant, which um, it's really hard to wean off. Um, he really need to work with a specialist and you know his doctor like what he should do. Maybe he will wean off, maybe not, but that's something to uh, to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I hope that you feel inspired by his story. And now is your turn. So pick one biggest pain point that you have. What do you want to change for the next year moving forward? And you can commit to one small change that is a part of your routine, and do it for the next 30 days, because it takes at least 21 days to form a new habit. So if you can stick it out and do it for 30 days, you make sure that it's a part of your life. What do you want? What do you need to remove? 
What do you need to do to regenerate? Maybe sleep better, or maybe try fasting. And what can you improve in your diet? Maybe you know take supplements because your diet is already good, or maybe change something in your diet. So that's all I want to um, share with you today. And thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you feel inspired to take some action. And if there is any question, I'm here to help. <laughs> thank you. Anybody with a really important question, I'll bring the microphone over and you can ask Nan anything except don't tell, tell her about your ball movements. <laughs> Quick question about the green smoothie in the morning. We need a little bit of sweetener with it. What do you think of frozen blueberry, blackberry, strawberry, frozen ones? They're a lot less expensive. What do you think? I think they're great. I, I use them too because you, you can't really get the fresh stuff all the time, right? And it's low sugar. I mean, I love my berry smoothies, yeah. Okay, I know you're a youngin, and this doesn't affect you, but as you look around this room, it is full of zombie cells. I mean, they're everywhere. What's best to get rid of zombies? <laughs> um, well, I would say, Aging is, a part of it is also your mindset, right? And humor, and also just be light at heart, and you know, just enjoy life. I have to tell you, I don't know if I've told you that I'm 40 this year, and uh, it feels like, you know, like half of my lifespan, or maybe a little bit more. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks for your talk. I knew a lot of what you talked about, but you filled in a lot of blanks that I wasn't aware of, so I appreciate that. Question about um, supplements. You had a list of supplements in various dosages. When you take, um, suppl uh, when you take supplements in, uh, in, in, in pill form or whatever form, the body only absorbs 5% of that when, uh, when you take it orally. So are those doses adequate if for, for oral consumption to, to do the job? Um, there is no way to really measure if it's 5% of what you're taking because sometimes um, our body is intelligent. It's just take enough for what it needs and what it doesn't need, it just goes out. Especially like the water-soluble vitamins, like the B vitamins, the vitamin C. Um, yeah, like the more yellow you see, you know that that's the B vitamins metabolites that comes out with you. Yeah. Uh, as a teacher, I appreciate your presentation. It was clear, it was straight. We're going to walk out of here with the three R's. That's a great job. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Sure thing. Uh, you mentioned when you take the supplements to get an active kind. What does that mean, active? How do I differentiate? at the store what is not active and what is mm -hmm. yeah it will always be on the label um, you can also ask the sales staff because they would be informed about it um, b vitamins has um, i would say the b vitamins right like the one that i recommended to you the non-active form has a different name than the active form and i have a list of those names if you want i can just uh, write it down for you but one thing even if not all the Bs are active, one vitamin that I always look for is the B12. You want the word methyl. Methylcobalamin, that's the long name there. That is, um, that's the sign that it's a good quality. Yeah. Uh, wonderful talk. Um, all of the good fruits that you mentioned are common in my country, my native country. But let's face it, we're in Thailand, and one of the pleasures of being in Thailand is eating Thai fruit. Of course. So <laughs> are there any good Thai fruits? You know what? I have to confess that since I have been here like five months and six months in, I haven't really explored much of the Thai fruit that are not sweet. Like I know that there are the ones that, like most of them are sweet because they are tropical fruits. Um, guava is great. 
passion fruit. Uh, yeah, passion fruit is great. Um, watermelon, uh, still low sugar. Um, coconut for sure. You know, coconut is good. And then pineapple. If you want to use it, use the core of the pineapple too. It has really good enzyme. Um, not just the outside. Yeah. Mango. Go for the one that's not too yellow. Like maybe like in between, so you like you get that sour taste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I've got two questions. You asked about a lifestyle uh, change for the next year, and and I suffered from a little osteoarthritis. It was suggested by my healthcare professional take collagen two uh, with uh, fish oil, mm -hmm. salmon oil, mm -hmm. and then uh, as I was doing this for the last three weeks, a friend said you should use magnesium to compound and let the uh, collagen to assimilate better. Yeah. Is that true? For the magnesium, I don't think that, I, I would say I am not sure, okay? Because like in, in terms of the process of collagen production, vitamin C and silica, yeah. and uh, yeah, those are important for collagen production. And of course, the amino acid from the collagen you're taking. But for magnesium, it's more for like the bones and the muscles, in my opinion. Yeah, from what I know. Okay. Uh, my second question is you really didn't touch on amino acids and how they help the protein assimilate in your body. Uh, can you uh, talk about amino acids a little bit? Oh, um, like uh, your question is like um, how, how does it help with collagen production? Or? Of the seven amino acids. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> we have, we need all amino acids, right? And we have like the essential ones that we have to get from food and uh, the non-essential one that we can actually create in our body using the materials of, you know, the food, the nutrients that we have from food. Um, on the top of my head, I don't remember all of them, but they are building blocks of so many things in the body. So for collagen, for example, you'll need certain vitamins and minerals in order to make this particular protein because amino acid is the building blocks of the protein. So we need, it's, it's like building Lego, like you have different color of Lego and uh, you make different shapes and collagen is one type of protein that the body makes. And it used um, proline, glycine, and uh, the other one, I don't remember, but they're like mainly, mainly three, three uh, amino acid. But yeah, we have so many types of collagen too, so sometimes there are variations. Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. I have a question and a comment for you, actually. Um, do you have, uh, do you provide professional dietitian services? Um, yes, yes, I do. And do you have cards available for us afterwards or information? Um, right now, because uh, I've just moved to Thailand and um, I have to think about the regulation of uh, how we can practice in Thailand. So right now I'm collecting emails if any of you are interested and we can directly you know, contact each other and you can ask me about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah so um, this, these are the sign-up sheets. They're going to be up the back. If there's uh, people want to sign them up before that, I can drop them off at your table. But yeah, join the, uh, join the sign up sheet. Thank you, Ron. And my comment is uh, around the turn of this century, a, on uh, TED Talks, they had a panel of people working on longevity that included everybody studying the cutting edge of stem cell research, uh, body organ replacement, chemical formulas for increased life. Uh, ability to increase telomeres, etc. And at the conclusion of that talk, they made this statement. The first person to live to a thousand years alive today. Wow. <laughs> wow is right. And I actually had a talk in this group several years ago about another lady on longevity. And she was saying, the new Middle Ages is 70. So you are nowhere near half of your life. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but the one important thing huh. that's not really discussed, you made a brief mention of that, is attitude. If you're not prepared to live a long life, you will not. Mm -hmm. 
My yes. dad died at 70. He thought 60 was long enough. My mom died at 60, 93, 25 years to the day after my dad died because she didn't think she was living long enough. She thought she was living too much. So everybody that's here, you want to live older, glad to see you all, and let's just keep thinking positively. Thank you. Amazing, yeah. It's all about the mindset. Hello. Uh, I'm a teacher also, and I, I, I saw what you were doing through your process, and I, I thought it was a great presentation. Thank um, you. A couple of uh, questions. One is the, uh, the D3 and K2 combination. When you, I know when you go to a store, you can see lots of D3. Sometimes you can see it with K2. Yeah. Uh, is there a, a good way to buy, I suppose you want to buy the two together in one pill, uh, and I wondered if there's a, just a little hint as to how to buy those. Of course. Yeah, okay, so um, according to uh, like the states, in the states you can get vitamin D3 for 5,000 IU with uh, K2 about 120 micrograms in one pill. But if you have sun exposure, like we're in Thailand, right? I usually go for the lower dose. So 1,000 IU of D3 and then 120 micrograms of K2 or even like 100 micrograms. So that's the range you want to look for because I always recommend the minimum because you don't want to overdose anything. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And the second question is, <clears throat> you, with these supplements, uh, is, it, uh, is it recommended to um, take them with food, without food? Is there an advantage to doing it one way or the other? That's it. That's a great question. Yeah. Because it's a part of the food, I always encourage people to take with food. Most of them, yeah. Yeah, it goes uh, to say that excellent uh, report. Um, Thank you. I was ticking most of those, except I have a stubbornness in my body. Um, each morning I exercise. Um, I live in a condo, so I run up six flights of stairs and down, except Saturdays and Sundays. Uh. <laughs> I have a rest. And then I work for 20 minutes in calisthenics. Now, the problem is, I seem to be losing muscle tone, but can't lose this blasted belly fat, mm. even though I'm doing sit-ups and pressure-ups, you know. I mm -hmm. do 30 press-ups and about the same sit-ups. Mm. I still have this body fat. What am I doing wrong? So you're saying that you're exercising every day, and yet it's still here, I've right? still got this, you know, <laughs> everybody says love handles. Well, I don't want to love them. I want to get rid of them. <laughs> well, um, it depends on the type of exercise you do. And um, also, as I would say, mainly when someone accumulates fat in the middle, men or women, we have a um, high cortisol level, which is the uh, stress hormones. And uh, the way that we're going to know it is through th testing. Yeah. But now, um, I don't know if you have a lot of stress in your life. Um, you know. Okay. <laughs> right, right. Right, yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. I think you look good, by the way. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, he looks good. Um, 
I wanted to ask about the microbiome. Oh, sure. um, I take a probiotic supplement every day, and I think it helps. Uh, you hadn't mentioned the microbiome, so I wondered if you had any thoughts about that, and also about supplementing it. For sure, yeah. Um, probiotics are great to have. In the market, though, we have just a common um, strains of probiotics, and also the one that are specific to a certain issue as well. And for me, I find that there are certain brands that have the one that they call human strain. So when people ask me, what do you mean, human strain? Like we get it from human? Kind of, because we have to study the strains in um, you know, healthy people that will be beneficial for people who have imbalanced microbiome. And that would be something that you could take like periodically, but you don't have to take it all the time because these kind of strains stay in your body. And there are the strains that are from plants and animals that can help with a certain problem that you can take, you have to take every day because they don't stay in your body. So my take on it is that probiotics are great to have, but you probably don't need to take it all the time and um, always rotate. By the way, she wanted to give more of a talk about gut health, etc. But we've got a, uh, she, her talk was perfect length, by the way. But uh, also, we've got a talk in a couple of weeks from a doctor who's going to talk about gut health and collagen in particular. So, um, Talking about gut health, um, I'm very regular with regard to bowel movements. Every morning, every morning at six o'clock, without fail. Only trouble is I don't get up while seven. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't have it at six in the morning, but there you go. Our friend over there trying to get rid of your gut. I think you've got to do exercises specifically for that area. And I can actually show you what you could do if you want to talk to me afterwards. So I think it's about you can get rid of your gut if you want to. The question I'd like to ask you is that you um, say you fast for a certain amount of time, so you got your dad to eat at five, so he was finished by six, and the idea then was to give him fasting until ten, was that the idea? Yeah, 16 hours of no food, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thanks very much. I find the hardest thing here, though, is for uh, probably half the people here find it difficult to eat properly because we go out and we go to restaurants two three four times a, a week or whatever uh, the other ones the slim people you see I'm sure they're eating at home you eat the right food uh, it's quite easy for you <laughs> so <clears throat> this is a problem I think with our sex packs you know we like to go out and part of going out and eating is, is socializing, of course. So this, this whole thing is, is quite difficult for us to uh, sort of say, yeah, we're going to eat at home and eat the right, right things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, um, so I would say that maybe uh, one or two days of the week, right, that you have to do that, and maybe uh, the rest of the week you could prepare something so that it becomes easier for your daily meals. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you shop at uh, local markets? Because they have like a good variety of food, and you can definitely like stock up, you know, for the week. I find that they're a really good price. I don't shop at supermarkets anymore. Yeah. Yes. Um, sorry again. Um, I, Circadian rhythm. Yes. Um, how? Well, I just tell you, I am an owl. I am not a rooster. I don't wake up until 4 p.m. in the afternoon, and most of the time don't go to sleep until 2 or 3 in the morning. That is my normal circadian rhythm. Right. And they're now finding that when you fight that rhythm, which, you know, the, the uh, age of industri industrial age, forced us into, you know, 8 to, you know, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. And a lot of us, that's just not natural for us. So we're tired all the time. 
they say it's adrenal fatigue. But my information that I've just found out myself is that if I go with my circadian rhythm, then I'm not tired. When I try to stay up all the time during the daytime, I'm always tired. So I think that's just another area that not a lot of research has been done, but I think it is important. That is very interesting, yeah, because from what I learned from school, um, that routine is more like uh, adrenal fatigue, like you said. And um, there are ways to check the hormone panels to see how you're doing during the daytime and the nighttime. I have to look more into it about like how to live according to your own rhythm because like from what I learned that we, we get our hormones activated through sunlight, which is the morning, right? And um, that's how we operate. But yeah, I will look into that. Apparently, apparently uh, there are some people who are just natural owls, right? I used to think that it was like just the, they got into a bad habit, but uh, no, there's some people who are natural owls and just have to go with that, yeah. But most of us, I grew up on a farm. I didn't have an opportunity to become an owl. Get up, help feed the cows. <laughs> so, all right, now, a couple of things. Firstly, don't go anywhere, Nan. Oh. Dan, you're not getting off that easily. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> How hard is it to believe this was her first ever public talk? Huge round of applause. Thank you so much. <laughs> And we have a very small token of our deep appreciation. Uh, and, uh, so thank you so much.